fellow YouTube and fellow Star Wars collectors. On this episode of Toys Are The Way, we will be taking a look at the first Vintage Collection Deluxe figure for the year, Jango Fett from Attack of the Clones. If you're new to the channel or a fan of Star Wars collecting, be sure to smash a like on this video, remember to subscribe, and make sure to ring that bell to stay notified. And a special thank you to my channel members, your support is greatly appreciated. Welcome back gang, so as I mentioned earlier, we will be taking a look at a vintage collection figure who has been highly requested as an update for our shelves, and it is Jango Fett from Attack of the Clones. And here you can see the old figure, and it just looks nowhere near as good as what we're getting right here. So that's really nice to see this kind of update in the vintage collection. Now Django is a deluxe figure and I like to use that term very loosely because he doesn't really come with a ton of world building accessories if you ask me. Yes, I kind of appreciate the flamethrower effect and like the jet propulsion effects. Those are cool, but I like to see those like larger mid-size items that come with these deluxe figures such as the charging station that came with the dark trooper or the e-web cannon and stormtrooper those were fantastic releases and definitely two of my personal favorites just because they had a lot in that packaging so that's something i would like to see hasbro do a little better with in terms of these deluxe releases sure he does have phenomenal paint applications and they sometimes like to say that, you know that is a costly thing that they're adding there and it can bump this figure into a deluxe price range but I don't know I just think that they could have done a little bit better for Django Fett but with that being said let's take a closer look at the figure and the packaging here we have the deluxe style packaging that we're becoming more and more familiar with in the vintage collection. We have the Star Wars and Attack of the Clones logo up top, followed by the name of the character. We then have two Sunburst logos showing off the character and accessories that are included in this packaging. And lastly, we have a nice image of Jango Fett in the Geonosis Arena, looking pretty good with that Kenner logo down below. On the side of the box, we have the Star Wars and Attack of the Clones logo once again with another image of Jango in the Geonosis Arena. And on the opposite side, we have the same thing as well with a different image of Django holding his blasters, and I will say that that image looks pretty good in my opinion. Taking a look at the back of the box, we have a similar design with the Attack of the Clones logo, Django Fett in the Geonosis Arena, the Vintage Collection logo, and one final image showing all the accessories included in this packaging. So while I must say this is a pretty decent box and it has some really nice toy photography, it's nowhere near as good as a Vintage Collection card back, and I really hope to see Django make it into the Vintage Collection proper someday. And just in case you happen to be new to collecting or the Vintage Collection, this is how the contents look inside. You have a cardboard tray that slides out and has the figure attached to it, and I actually noticed that they're not really taping the accessories anymore to that, so they're kind of just loose in there. But yeah, this is pretty much how the figure comes and your accessories are put in this small tissue paper type of bag. Moving on, we have the accessories. And first up, we have Django's jetpack, which is actually his secondary jetpack that you see him use on Geonosis and not the one that's seen during his battle with Obi-Wan on the Kamino platform. Looks pretty good. It's got some nice silver paint applications on it, and it's pretty much the same jetpack that we've seen with those Clone Wars releases. It's got that standard peg on the back, so you can put this on other Mandalorian figures if they do have that peg hole. So pretty good stuff here. Looks really nice. And then moving on, we have the flamethrower effect, which is actually the same one that's seen with the incinerator trooper. It's a nice translucent orange plastic, and yeah, you can pretty much put this on Django's left arm gauntlet and have that flame accessory. And then we also have the jetpack flames, which are the same ones that come with the dark trooper and other Mandalorian figures with jetpacks. It's a nice translucent plastic with a little bit of a gradient there, and yeah, these are nice to get. And then we also have his blaster pistol, which has some pretty good detailing on it. It could probably be a little bit more defined in my opinion. It also doesn't have the negative space on that handle that we've seen on older releases, so that's a bit of a shame. And then the only thing I would have really liked to see here is the same silver paint application that's seen on his armor, just so everything has a consistent look, but it's not really a deal breaker. And yeah, pretty good. They're not a very bendy plastic, so that's actually pretty nice to see. And then lastly, we have the helmet which is a nice swappable one. It's not the soft plastic, you know, removable one that can be terribly poor proportioned sometimes, so that's good to see. It's got an articulated rangefinder, which is great. Paint applications look pretty clean for the most part on mine. The only thing it's lacking are those two triangles 
up top, which is a bit of a shame because we did see those originally on that first Boba Fett that really set off things in the Vintage Collection. You can see that tiny little detail there. The only thing is just Hasbro never articulated that rangefinder, unfortunately. And we gave them a lot of feedback, so they did give us articulated rangefinders, which was nice. We saw that later with the Clone Wars version. And, yeah, articulated. But this is actually not the same helmet that they use because this doesn't have the triangles either. And it actually doesn't have that little like a uh, little bolt type thing on the uh, side portrait that you can see there. So that is supposed to be there because you do see that with Boba Fett here. And yeah, it almost looks like I think they went out of their way to make us another helmet. They just forgot to put the triangles on there, which is a bit unfortunate. But I'm not going to complain because this is nicely proportioned. And that's the only thing I really care about at the end of the day. And taking a look at Jango Fett out of the packaging and with all of his accessories, I do think he looks rather stunning in my opinion. And it really goes to show you that Hasbro took the time to invest in proper Mandalorian tooling with all of those Clone Wars and Mandalorian series releases. And it enabled them to give us a practically perfect Jango Fett in my opinion. He looks really good and I'm definitely going to have to have this one with all the accessories displayed on a flight stand in my collection. He looks fantastic. Uh, here you can see the flame effect, which goes into his gauntlet, just as I described earlier. It's got a little peg right there. And the same thing happens with these uh, jet propulsion effects. They can peg into the bottom of the jet thrusters right there. Taking a look at the articulation, Django comes with everything we want to see on our modern Star Wars figures. The new style barbell hips, ball jointed knees, elbows, rocker ankles, everything you're going to need to put him in pretty dynamic poses. He's got that nice crunch up here, which allows us to get... Uh, pretty good posing as well and then he's got hinges at the wrist which are really helpful when you're doing like you know kind of a gunslinger or marksman type of pose for your action figures the only thing i'll say he doesn't really have that's great is the articulation in his neck like the barbell neck joint it doesn't really allow him to like look up too well he kind of can go downward and of course he can go side to side and get a slight tilt here and there but it's really not the best in my opinion uh, he's got the soft plastic shoulder armor here, which doesn't hinder any of his range of motion, so that's always nice to see. And that's definitely the same one that we saw on the Clone Wars figures. Uh, pretty much this figure is a kit bash of those Clone Wars releases. The lower legs are from that figure, uh, the upper, pretty much everything except the thigh here, his gauntlets, which are specific to Django, and this uh, flame accessory, and then this upper thigh plate as well. That's all new stuff, so... Pretty cool to see. Here's the jetpack, which of course you can simply take off like so, and then peg it back on on there. And yeah, I will say that Django's got really good articulation. The holsters don't get too much in the way, in my opinion. Um, maybe when you have this blaster pistol, it kind of bumps into him, but it's not that awful. So all in all, I think Django is a stunning release for the vintage collection. And lastly, we have to take a look at the face portrait. And I think Hasbro has done a pretty decent job here in terms of getting us a Django Fett from Attack of the Clones. I think the paint applications on the scars and stuff like that look pretty decent. And yeah, it definitely looks like Django Fett. I think the hair could have been done a little better because it kind of looks like the one that we typically see on most of our clones, but I'm not too mad about it. I'm pretty much always going to have Django with his helmet on, so not too bad. And then the last thing I want to point out is the jetpack. This is the one from Boba Fett from Return of the Jedi, and they really should have included this version with this deluxe figure. It just would have been a nice extra accessory to have. So one last thing I wanted to point out was the belt and holster. Here you can see that Hasbro has kind of engineered this to sit a little too low on Django. Uh, the one on the left I heated up in hot water, which made the soft plastic holster and belt a little bit more flexible. And I was able to then slide it up his thigh and move it higher on his uh, torso so that it sits flush with his Beskar armor, which is much more accurate to the costume that's seen in Attack of the Clones. And I do think that it overall looks much better. So if that's something that kind of like, you know, annoys you a little bit that's a pretty easy fix um, if you take a look at the back of this figure that's been adjusted you can see there's a tiny little area where it's kind of supposed to like peg into but if that doesn't bother you and you want a better aesthetic look for your figure that's pretty much how it's gonna end up looking so just something to take note of Django Fett is just a simple man trying to make his way in the universe. Unfortunately, Hasbro had all the tooling necessary to deliver a fully articulated and definitive update for our shelf displays. 
armed with the now standardized new style hips, ball jointed everything, hinges at the wrists, and rocker ankles, this ruthless bounty hunter will certainly live up to his reputation. Released under the hefty deluxe price point of $25, Django Fett does come with a number of interactive accessories and premium silver paint applications, which look stunning to say the least. But TVC fans would have liked to see a bit more included with this set for that price namely the poncho and alternative jetpack seen during the altercation on Kamino. While I was not initially impressed by the accessories shown with Django, the enhanced gauntlet and flame plugin are really speaking to me and have definitely earned a spot in my collection room and shelf display. While the figure is packed with an arsenal of articulation points that allow for a plethora of poses, the barbell neck joint is limiting and isn't able to look upward at the sky for that blast off pose with the jetpack and thruster accessories. Hopefully this is something Hasbro can improve on future releases in the Vintage Collection. Regardless, this bounty hunter is able to easily engage with all of the weapons and accessories, creating realistic blaster motions as seen in battle. This combined with impeccable paint applications and detail throughout make a fearsome addition to any collection, an absolute must have for any Attack of the Clones display. I hope you've enjoyed this video and taking a look at the latest Vintage Collection Deluxe figure, Django Fett from Attack of the Clones. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. It really helps and is always greatly appreciated. Thanks everyone and may the force be with you.